this week talking about my you know if you followed last week one where i got my favorite 50 this is my favorite 50. you've heard of leica whether you own any of their stuff whether it's lenses or cameras or you know other accessories you've probably heard of the sumalux well maybe you haven't maybe you've heard of the sumacron the noctilux you know the elmerit and you know all these other names uh uh, tags that go along with the different models of equipment that they have but anyway I'm gonna to talk to you this week about my favorite 50 um, again it's kind of a follow-up to last week's one but I'm gonna focus on why this is my favorite 50 and you know some of the stats and specs and other things that go along with it as well as some samples to show you why it's my favorite 50 so don't go anywhere and uh, let's dig into this here I am, Vietnam. Green is always coming down. Camera talk with Dr. Scott. Okay, this week, if you, you're following the intro, obviously the uh, focus is going to be on my Sumalux, which is my favorite 50, according to, uh, you know, last week's episode going through 17 different lenses and uh, determining which one out of those 50s was my favorite 50. I've got other 50-ish, you know, 55s and 58s, you know, but uh, the episode was based upon the 50, the standard 50. And the Sumalux um, kind of won out over, over all the other uh, great ones that I have. Some obviously better than others, but some truly great ones um, were included in that in that collection. So if you want to know what those were, go back last week and watch last week's episode. But this week we're talking about the Sumalux. Now I'm not going to go through a history of uh, Leica because I do that in other episodes and whatnot. But um, this week I'm talking about just the, just the Sumalux by itself. So. Where to start with that, you know, a little um, history behind it, you know, the naming, um, you know, models that, that Leica uses are, uh, you know, a mix of, you know, in the, in the back in the back in the yesterday, yesteryear, uh, a lot of lenses were named after, uh, after dogs and, you know, other various um, favorite items of the uh, lens designers, but um, in the more common element of things, it would be uh, using Latin. So Sumalux, if you break that down, um, you have two Latin words mixed together there. One is Sumun, which is Latin for the highest, or the most of something. Um, and then Lux, which is light. So you put them together and you get the highest light or the most light because you know, again, back in the day, 1.4 aperture was considered pretty badass, and it was uh, and it brought in brought in the most light. And then Leica also was a trendsetter not long after this was developed by bringing in the first Noctilux, Noctilux, which is uh, you know uh, night of the light or light of the night, depending on which way you want to translate it, or king of the night. You can also think of it that way too or King of the Light, whatever. Noctilux, I don't own one. They're outrageously expensive, you know, over $10,000, $12,000 type thing. Um, so this is expensive enough for me. But anyway, uh, that's where like I, you know, got their, got their naming elements from. Now this, the uh, Sumalux uh, was first developed um, in 1961. You know, it was on the, obviously on the drawing boards in the 1960, but, um, you know, coming out of the 50s, 1950s, you know, the Sumacron, uh, Sumatar, and then the Sumacron were, uh, were pretty much the, uh, the trendsetters of the day. And then the Sumalux came along and basically wiped out the field. Uh, they actually pretty much killed off uh, Nika. Nikon, Nikon's um, rangefinder line, because their best lens, um, they couldn't couldn't even come close to what what uh, Leica was doing. So they 
pretty much, you know, just really terminated their learning and, and focused on, uh, on SLR cameras at that point, which was obviously a good move for them because that's how they, you know, went on to dominate along with Canon, you know, the SLR market. So uh, they pretty much left, um, left Leica alone with their, with their range finders. But anyway, um, you know, what else can I say about this? It's, uh, it started in 1961 and the design was so successful that it went on to kind of dominate the 50 millimeter range, um, uh, 1.4 range for, uh, you know, four decades, you know, from 1961 all the way to 2004 with the exact same design. Now there were three different versions of this, you know, the, um, which was just barrel design more than anything else, but the optics were the same. Uh, the coatings were the same. Uh, there were seven elements in five groups, um, 12 aperture blades. It's close, f close focus distance was for the most part, one meter, but for the last version of it, it, it brought it down to, uh, 70 centimeters or 0.7, which is what the current version is, which is this one here. Um, so again, it was, you know, kind of ruled the market, um, for four decades. That's saying something, you know, if you can, if you can create a lens, which is considered the best lens in the world, uh, for that long, that tells you something. But anyway, uh, bringing this up to date, um, you know, I bought this one and it's, uh, this one was actually made in 2004. So this is like the first year um that they that they changed and what they did is they added an a spherical element into the uh into the mix so instead of seven elements in five groups now that's eight elements in five groups and what also changed was the uh the last group um was a moving group so it's a floating uh, floating element as they call it so when when you focus um, not only are you focusing, um, you know, the, the, uh, elements, the front elements all together, but the back elements actually move along so you can, um, so you can get a more stable, uh, close focus, uh, on the back end, so to speak, or the close, or the close end, if you want to call it that. Um, the construction of this thing is excellent. You know, it's all metal. Uh, the only plastic on it is the tab itself which helped, you know, obviously save, save money on it. The little red, the little red dot, you know, or the, um, it's where you, where you mount, you know, you match up to mount it on the, on the camera itself. And, you know, lens caps and rear caps, of course, but they're not constructed part of the, part of the, uh, lens itself. Um, built in hood. So it just slides up. It can lock, turn it, you know, it's turn it one little turn to the left and it locks in place. Um, which again, it's not the greatest hood in the world. You know, it's not long or anything, but you know, um, it could help shade, you know, if you have direct sunlight overhead or whatnot, but it also can help if you bang into something, you'd rather, you'd rather, uh, damage this than damage, damage your front element, which could be a little pricey. Um, goes from 1.4 to, uh, F16, which is good enough. I mean, in, in today's world, you may say, oh, what happened on F22 or F32 that other lenses go to? Well, look at the size of this for one thing. If you want to compare to other fifties, you know, that I have up here, again, you can look at them, look at last week's episode to see a size comparison between them all. But even this, because it's a 1.4, it is bigger than. Uh, like a Sumacron, uh, which is an F2. And uh, even though it's just a stop difference between the two, um, the sizes of them are very different. Uh, I'll show you this is a, this is a Sumacron here. And, you know, again, you can see, you know, how, how much thinner the barrel is here versus, versus this one. And again, another excellent lens. Um, you know, when, when uh, one of the things that Leica, themselves uh, kind of tote as their they state that there's a 
a subtle contrast transition. So the uh, contrast doesn't change throughout the transition much. You just see it, um, again, very subtle, very slight change of the contrast. So it's not drastic. It's not, you know, hurting your eyes as, uh, you know, as you transition through, through the range. It's also free of uh, coma and ghosting effects. You know, if you know anything about those, you know, when you're lit shooting at nighttime with lights and whatnot, and you can always play, uh, play havoc on many lenses. The um, Sumalux is designed to eliminate, eliminate those, you know, um, goes without saying how important that is to a lot of photographers out there. But speaking of what's important to a lot of photographers out there is sharpness. You know, everybody was talking about sharpness. Oh, how sharp is it? How sharp is it? How sharp is it? Well, because it's a Leica and because it's, you know, well-designed, it has pretty, pretty good sharpness, you know? Um, and you again, comparing to other lenses, you would say it has great sharpness, but if you compare it to a Summicron, you know, the Summicron is where the sharpness comes in. So what's the trade-off between the two? Well, if you want sharpness, why wouldn't everybody just run out and buy a Summicron? Bokeh. So you're out of focus, uh, out of focus, part of your photograph um, and the quality of that out of focus area is called bokeh. Uh, is it good, good bokeh, harsh bokeh, smooth bokeh, painterly bokeh, soap bubble bokeh, you know, there's many ways to describe the bokeh or bokeh, some people say. But the uh, Summicron here, or Summicron, that's the Summicron, the Summilux um, is kind of king of bokeh as far as uh, as far as the the fifties go, um, now I I take that back. As if you don't want to get into Noctilux fifty with the uh, zero point nine five um, um, aperture on that one, it's got some pretty killer bokeh as well. But as far as smooth, painterly, attractive bokeh goes, the Summilux still king of the king of the bokeh um, in this person's opinion, anyway. So, um, anyway, the, uh, again, the construction is excellent. It's all metal. Um, you know, we talked about the, the helicoids, um, which are, which, um, um, move the, move the barrel back or forth to, uh, the, to, uh, attain focus and the, uh, floating, the floating element at the back makes, makes the difference. Now I have a, or is it up top here? The, the silver one, if you see on the second shelf, is my 35 Sumalux um, FLE. Same thing, 1.4. And uh, also a very excellent lens. Works mechanically the same way with a floating element in the back. So double uh, helicoid there. And for some people, that makes a, makes a difference. And they complain that the focus is a little more difficult because of the fact that you're, you know, using two different helicoids to, to focus, you know, with practice, the more you use these things, you really don't notice it at all. So, eh, people whine about the, whine about the dumbest things, but anyway, it's a great lens. Um, I'm going to show you some, uh, some photographs that I've taken with this lens. Um, uh, mostly with my, my favorite little model son, Dylan. And, uh, you know, I'll include some other, uh, some other photos as well. Um, and some, uh, um, you know, spec sheets, if you're interested in that, the MTF sheets and everything for it. Um, I'll include that here. So, um, Really, that's all I can I can really say about this uh, about this lens. It's an excellent lens. The reason why it's my it's my favorite fifty is because of the fact of the the quality of the the quality of the the photos that I get out of this thing. Um, you know, if you ask uh, you know Peter Carbon who designed this lens in two thousand four, uh, the aspheric version, um, he will tell you that. You know, his lenses 
or his designs were best used wide open. And our lenses provide a like a look uh, that only happens when you use them wide open. And that's how they're optimized. That's how they're meant to be used. Uh, and the only reason to stop down is really for depth of field considerations. At 1.4, you know, that's what he says you should be shooting this at, 1.4. And it's the same with all his lenses. I tried doing that with, uh, you know, some of my other lenses that I talked about last week. You know, the 1.4, they're okay, but actually their, their sharpness uh, really comes into play at f4, f5.6, whatnot, is where, where their peak sharpness is. Whereas in the Sumalux and the Summa Crown and so forth and so on are sharp, wide open, you know. A lot of photographers out there, you know, dream of shooting wide open all the time. But then they, you know, if their focus is really on sharpness, then they, they stop down to uh, F2, F4, F5.6 to try and get that sharpness that they're looking for. But then they lose that, that lovely uh, out of focus background or the, uh, the bokeh, bokeh. So if you want the bokeh king, get yourself a Sumalux. I always recommend getting them used. I mean, if you got a whole whack of money and you don't mind buying these brand new, go right ahead. Um, I did that with my 35 because there wasn't any here in Vietnam used that I could get. So I had to buy that brand new, but this one I found used. And uh, again, as long as it's in good condition, it was taken good care of. Um, you know, I always recommend doing some test shots with it yourself to make sure that it is. Um, you know, still a healthy lens before you go sinking a few thousand dollars into it. But, um, but that's pretty much all I've got to say about this. And, uh, so I highly recommend it doctor's recommendation. So, um, as I said, let's look at some, let's look at some photos. So here's, here's, uh, a bunch of photos of my son, Dylan, and, uh, some other samples just to show you what we're talking about. All right, so how'd you like those? Looks pretty cool, huh? Um, you know, now you see now you see what I'm talking about. Um, it, it is. It's a. It's well worth, well worth its weight in gold, so to speak. And um, really, that's that's uh, pretty much all I've got for you this week. Um, yeah, I hope it was short and sweet. In terms of camera talk, there is no short sweet <laughs> camera talk episodes like a two minute or a five minute episode like other YouTubers. I tend to, uh, I tend to go on a bit, you know, teachers tend to do that. They talk, 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 talk. Um, so, uh, what else I want to say, go out, get yourself one, uh, leave a comment below. What do you think about the Sumo Lux? Maybe you got a Sumo Cron, uh, maybe you have other Leica lenses you want to, uh, compare it to, to think, uh, I think it's worth, uh, worth the comment, or maybe you're just a, a Leica luster. You wish you would have, uh, some like a gear, but it might be a little pricey for you. Or maybe you're a like a hater. Plenty of those out there. I hate like a. You know, I like like I've got nothing against them other than, you know, they're grapes. They're, they're wine sniffers. It's wine sniffer equipment. And... For all kinds of crazy reasons, but um, still, it's, it's like saying, you know, I hate my Rolex. Or I hate people who wear Rolexes because they're too expensive. You know, my Casio digital is more accurate, which is true, but the Rolex is prettier. The Rolex is classier, you know, there's so on and so forth. Um, you know, it's all subjective. So anyway, uh, I don't want to go on about that. That's another episode too. You can watch of uh, my like a man in Vietnam, uh, episodes. So, um, Hey, I'd appreciate, you know, if you could, uh, help support my channel 
And uh, hey, give me a subscribe. And give me a second one, if you possibly could. Maybe you have two G uh, Google logins and you can give two subscriptions. That would be great. And uh, why not a third one? Subscribe. And you know how the algorithm also is just like Facebook and everything else. And Instagram, they like the likes. So if you could give me a like, that would be greatly appreciated. And here's the thumbs up girls to back that opinion up. Luminar. And it's, um, you know, again, it's like, it's like Lightroom and, and uh, you know, Photoshop and Capture One and all these. You know, it's got lots of bells and whistles and it's relatively economical. If you uh, click below, they gave me a little link where I could help you save $10. I make a little, uh, little something, something on the side from that as well. Why not help out the, uh, help out the teacher um, in that regard? Um, other than that though, that was pretty much uh, all I want to say this week. So this was Camera Talk with Dr. Scott. You uh, stay safe out there. Stay COVID free, wash your hands, don't touch your face, stay away from uh, large crowds. Of course, back in, you know, back in my home country, things are starting to open up a little more, but yeah, we'll see how well that goes. Get your vaccine, um, get your second one too, and, uh, and you should be fine. So anyway, that was all I have this week. So come on back next week. Come on back for another episode of Camera Talk and have yourself a great weekend. A great week and we'll see you next time all right bye bye